Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I am Matt Roast here with Jessica Bun Bun. And, you know, we like to think that we are both talented, just like, you know, the talented Mr. Ripley here. Oh, no, 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 I am not. You, you're telling me that no, I no, can't, no. like, go and put on a wig and go to some various places and be <laughs> like, hello, I am using a similar accent, slightly different. No one would know. <laughs> Who I am now. That is not a talent that I wish. I do not wish to be a criminal. No, I do not wish to be a criminal. I would be a really terrible criminal, by the way. Yeah, I'm I'd really, be I'd be, I'm really clumsy. So it'd be like, oh, stop that thief who just tripped <laughs> and fell down the stairs. Okay. This video, we're going to give you guys our full review of Ripley on Netflix, the entire season or i guess series they're claiming this is a limited series we will see on that they did leave it open that there could be more i mean spoilers ahead obviously yeah. tom is still out in the wind with a new identity but yeah. just a bit of a disclaimer here neither of us have read any of the source material yeah. i have seen the movie the matt damon movie yeah. the talented mr ripley and matt has not no. and of course we've watched all of the episodes so yeah. there will be lots of spoilers going into this there'll be a little bit of movie comparison for me but no book comparisons yeah like this to me is really just going to be all about you know did this show really work like is this worthy of all of the massive amount of hype that has been out there for this show i mean yep and the answer is yes okay the answer is yes the answer is this is a worthwhile watch yes yet at the same time, no, no, my, no, 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 no. my answer is just sort of like, am I going to remember every part of this in a couple of weeks from now? I'm not sure. This is it's not going to be on my you know top five list at the oh. end of the year. It's going to be a show that I look back on fondly enough. And mm -hmm. I say, I appreciate Netflix for making it happen. This is not an easy sell to do an exclusively black and white show with, you know, mm -hmm. I know people know. Andrew Scott for a number of different things. Mm -hmm. I understand he's very attractive. You mm -hmm. guys wanted him in that speedo. I, I get that might be a selling point for some people out there. I'm not oblivious, but I just also recognize that there are some things that are going to drive me crazy about this show, and they are currently driving me crazy, and they might drive me crazy again when I fight with people in the comments about them. But I, I... Yeah, People might agree with you on that. For me, I absolutely love the show, and I think part of it was also that I have seen the movie, yeah. and there was a lot of miscast in the movie and the movie was too short which is weird for me to say because every time i'm watching a movie like i just watched harry potter for the first time a couple weeks ago i'm like oh my god this movie's two and a half hours long like stop these movies don't need to be this long but i always felt that the movie was just too short for everything that they were packing in to you know now that i've had this series i'm like this is what it needed to actually be able to breathe and to be as grim as it really is. Okay, we're going to get into what worked on the show, what didn't. Before we do, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You, we don't want you guys to miss anything else. Like, if you love great noirs, and I think we can both agree that Ripley is a really awesome representation of the noir yeah. genre. You know, Sugar is a new show that is coming to Apple TV+. Plus. It's actually yeah. premiering, like, late, late tonight, and it's got Colin Farrell. I think it's going to be very well worth your time. We're going to be covering that as well. And by subscribing, you guys help to support us to be able to make this content for all of you. Okay. Style wise, beautiful. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's this show is so beautiful, artistic, black and white, as you mentioned. The, the visuals, gorgeous. The acting, amazing. The casting for this was spot on. As I said, for the movie, Matt Damon just never was Tom Ripley for me. He just wasn't believable in that role. Philip Seymour Hoffman, who, you know, iconic, legendary actor, you know, that we've lost way too soon. Yeah. He is incredible, but wasn't right for the role of Freddie as well. Like, there was just a lot of miscasts where I think they were like, oh, we're going to get all these huge, big named actors to yeah. be in this movie and it'll draw people to watch it. And it did. But it didn't work in a lot of those ways. But here, it really worked. Like, the actor that was playing Freddie, 
Elliot Sumner is someone that I had never heard of. They are Sting's child. I think they're a musician. I, I don't really know much about them. They were so good in the role of Freddy because mm -hmm. Philip Seymour Hoffman was playing Freddy more like just this, you know, rich, snobby, you know, kind of being irritating. And over here, we had Elliot playing Freddie in this way that it was more layered. Because with the character of Dickie, they showed it very well in this show as well as in the movie, that it's, he's a character that when he has your attention and his attention is on you, the sun is shining only on you and you feel it. And then when he's done with you and he's moving on to the next person, you really feel like you're in the cold. And the Freddy character really brought that in because we were seeing Freddy, Marge, and Tom, where Freddy was somebody who felt like he was in the sun, but now he's in the cold. We have Marge who was in the sun and she's starting to get into the fade. And then we have Tom who's now in the sun. And so when we finally ran into Freddie, you could tell that there was like, you know, loneliness from missing his relationship with Dickie, sadness that was there, you know, jealousy that was there. Like it, this character was really layered and I really enjoyed their performance. The first three episodes, I think, of Ridley in particular are just extraordinary. I think these are fantastically well done, well shot. You mentioned the visuals. <laughs> this is some of the best cinematography I've seen for a show like this, I, I think, ever. Just the way that they lingered on certain objects, certain yes. locations. It was so unique. And the black and white, I know some people feel like it can be limiting, and it can be at times, but I think it was so rich with this show that it was just so much fun to look at, get lost in. Andrew Scott, I knew Andrew Scott was gonna be good in this role. Like I had, I think we both have seen him and enough stuff over the years to know that he can play a morally ambiguous person. Very, 10 out of 10. Yeah, I mean, Emmy worthy for this. I, I don't know if he'll get it, it's a crowded field these days, but I think he's absolutely worth it through everything that we see in these first few episodes and I, i've been reading a little bit of hemingway lately it felt a lot like a hemingway novel where you're sort of getting these three characters basically who are living within this sort of high society environment where they're going to these fancy places they're doing these fancy things and yet there's sort of this hollowness to it where you're sort of sitting back and being like okay well what are you guys really getting out of all of this and for ripley it is just this idea that he is the ultimate poser. What was going on for him in America wasn't working. He had sort of mooched and did everything that he could there. Mm -hmm. So now he's got this opportunity to come over there, find some sort of sense of purpose. But the challenge for him is that, oh, my sense of purpose is attached exclusively to Richard Greenleaf. Mm -hmm. It's attached entirely to his money, his stature, his power. What can I do? in order to maintain this. And he clings on to all of it until the very, very last second, until he starts to realize, okay, I can't move forward with this anymore. I gotta take some matters into my own hands with this exceptional scene on the boat. Yeah, okay, that scene on the boat. Okay, so let's sort of <laughs> set the scene of the show. So we have Tom who was living in America and he was living sort of not even paycheck to paycheck other people's paycheck to paycheck. Yes. He's like, you know, scheming and stealing money and doing what he can. He falls into this opportunity from, you know, Richard's dad, who's basically like, listen, my son's living this playboy lifestyle and is out in Italy and he's living off his trust fund and he's doing nothing with his life and I need him to come back. And it's like, okay, no problem. Can you go get him? I'll go get him. No problem. So he <laughs> yeah. goes out there. They end up sort of developing this friendship where it was kind of interesting because Richard didn't really remember who he was. And like I said, we haven't read the source material and I've seen the film, but in this adaptation, I was kind of like, is Tom Ripley actually even Tom Ripley or is Tom Ripley 
another identity that he took somewhere along the line. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because when Dickie was kind of looking at him, was just like, I just, I don't, I don't remember. Right. But he was like, oh, I'll take your word for it. Let's go. They really developed this close relationship where Marge, his girlfriend, does start to get into the the sunset of it all, where now the sun is shining on Tom. And it's that feeling of like, oh, the sun is only on me. But finally, they end up in this weird spot where he's caught like wearing Diggy's clothes and like taking on his personality and all these types of things where finally... He just can't take it anymore. And he talks to Marge and Marge is like, get rid of him. Like he's a bit of a creep. And, yeah. you know, I think he's in love with you and things just aren't right. Like you need to move on from him. And Rich is like, yeah, you're right. And they go out on this boat ride that was so grim. <laughs> oh, my goodness. In the film, it kind of went by a little quick. I love that they took their time, <laughs> really took their time with this. Where yeah. Diggy's like, I'm sorry, you know, you basically, you need to move on. Tom's like, yeah, I get it, no problem. But then, you know, kills him with this oar and tries to drop him in the ocean. The boat takes off and it's like coming towards him and he's trying to sink the boat. It was so intense. It was so intense. I, I could watch that episode an unhealthy amount of times. It was I, so intense. This show is making me try to be very much into like the literary map mode here but it's sort of one of my favorite books from like you know first 20 25 years of my life is american tragedy by theodore dreiser and like the the scene of ripley and dickie on the boat is very reminiscent to a scene in that book including the way in which it plays out and i think there's such a deliberateness and a confidence there with ripley where they're like we know we can pull off the entire scene whether it is to death of dickie mm -hmm. how Tom tries to handle this, how he succeeds and or fails at handling this and sort of making it this imperfect menagerie in a way that was really interesting and compelling to watch. I mean, I could see people being like, okay, this is taking too long. Why are we spending so much time on this? But at the same time, it was plotting for a reason because they're really throwing you into Tom's shoes. And Tom is basically sort of this sponge who just sort of soaks up either circumstances or names or people. That's why I think there's there's some credibility to the idea that you brought up that, okay, you know, did he pick up Tom Ripley somewhere along the way? And yeah. it's very well possible. He may have just soaked that in at some point being like, this is something that I need. Nobody is supposed to know the real me. And that's a yeah. fascinating thing to watch. I think through the entirety of this show where it can be very frustrating and I know I was really frustrated at times being like, I can't grasp onto this guy. I don't know what he wants. I don't know what exactly he thinks that his end game is. He's very detached. Is he hollow? But then I just sort of sit back and I'm like, okay, this is all intentional. I just have to accept it. Even if I don't want to accept it, I just have to accept it. I think Tom is very good at, you know, fraud, taking on people's identities, scamming, that sort of stuff. And he's been doing that a very long time. And I think that with everything that was going on with Dickie, I think he was actually developing some sort of a friendship there. There was something that was developing there that felt very genuine to Tom, that he felt like it was a real relationship was happening. When we saw him back in America, I mean, he was very lonely. He had nobody with him. He was in his sad little apartment. Mm -hmm. He was by himself all the time. And this was really like a very social thing for him where, you know, yeah, he wasn't building anything really with Marge, but he was building something really close with Dickie. And while he, yes, has this bit of a criminal background, murder doesn't seem to have been on that list. So like when we see that he decides to take that next step and kill Dickie, it's messy. He doesn't really know what to do. He's really bad at it. Yeah. Like all, even when he sinks the boat, he sinks it in just some shallow water in a cove. It's just kind of like, ah, like <laughs> it, it'll all be fine. And it sort of ends up being fine because he takes on Dickie's identity, which then sort of, makes it that Dickie ends up becoming this sort of main culprit in Tom's disappearance. And then we get into everything with Freddie, where Freddie is 
very perceptive and he's starting to pick up that some things just aren't right with his friend and that he doesn't really understand some of the things that Diggy's been doing, where he's been going, why he's been doing these things. None of these things are coming together. And finally, he shows up at Diggy's apartment and who's there? Tom. Yeah. And it starts to kind of put even more in his mind of like, th this isn't right. Like you're wearing his clothes. Like you're saying you don't live here with him, but you're here and he's not. You're telling me he's at this restaurant he would never be at at the time he would never be at. Like Freddie really knows Dinky very, very well. So nothing is making sense. He ends up going down, talking to yeah. the landlady who's like, no, Dinky is up in that apartment. He's there right now. I know he is. I just watched him walk by like a little while ago. Comes back in and we have this episode that I think is going to be sort of the most controversial or talked about episode mm -hmm. in this whole series. Because they took their time with this episode of Tom killing Freddie. Yeah. The cleanup, the setup, you know, piling him with alcohol, mopping up the blood. Like, it was very grim, and it yeah. took a very long time. They really went through it to show the process of, you know, him then taking him down the elevator, getting blood on the stairs, the cat walking in the blood, getting him in the car, getting dro just dropping him off on the side of yeah. the road. It's, again, I think very important, though, to show how Tom truly doesn't know what he's doing when it comes to murder fraud yes all this other stuff yes yeah. identity theft sure murder he just doesn't know how to deal with this he's brand new flailing around in this whole thing but because he's dicky Diggy's quickly the prime suspect in all of yes. this of what who killed freddie why tom is missing all of it and now all right it's hard hat time everybody let's oh, put dear. that on all right Here's the thing. By the time we got to everything with Freddy, I was still very much enjoying the show, but I started to have a little bit of a bugaboo in my head that just continued to become a big bugaboo in my head sort of closer to the end of the show, which is just that, how are none of these other people, other than poor Freddy, you know, rest in peace, how are these other people not figuring any of this out? Because, yes, Ripley is good as a con man. Ripley is good at certain things, taking on... Dickie's persona, but it felt like at times I was sitting back being like, is this really all working out for Ripley because of his con man skill or just because everybody else is kind of terrible? Because I'm sort of sitting back at certain points and I'm just thinking, okay. I understand this is a very different time period. I understand you can't exactly have the same forensics that we do. There's no CSI who's showing up on some of this stuff, no. but it's very bizarre to me that you have all of these people who see quote unquote Dicky hear about Tom, but never see Tom. And then you've got Marge who spends all of this time at various places throughout Italy, mind you, seeing Tom, but never seeing Dicky. So you have these different people who are seeing one person and not the other person who are communicating occasionally. Like, why at no point is Mr. Investigator Man, whose name I do not even remember, but why is Mr. Investigator Man not being like, hmm, this is interesting. We're, we're hearing some different things. You know, I haven't seen this Tom Ripley. I've seen a lot of this Richard Greenleaf. Can you tell me a little bit about what Tom Ripley looks like? And then she can describe Tom Ripley and be like, oh, no, like, don't get me wrong. The cliffhanger at the end of him seeing the real picture of Richard Greenleaf in the book and being like, oh, man, I'm an idiot. I was sitting here being like, yes, yes, you are an idiot. Because this entire time I have been driven crazy by you people and my inability to plausibly believe that he's going to get away with all of this. I understand you guys want a potential season two. I understand source material, all of that sort of stuff. It's just, I don't want to be the guy who's just like, if I was on the case, I would have figured it out. But I kind of feel like if I was on the case... I would have at least asked a couple more questions. I'm not saying I would have been perfect, but they just, they drove me crazy. Crazy with their ineptitude throughout all of this. No, I understand. <laughs> I understand where you're coming from with some of it. That, yes, 
the inspector would be asking a little bit more about Tom. And he did, but he didn't really ask, you know, what he looked like or where he was or anything like that. But I think a lot of it was because he already believed that Diggy did this, that Diggy was behind yes. it. He knew who Diggy was. He had had multiple conversations with him. He had people tailing Diggy to make sure he didn't leave the country. He just, he had his guy already. And because he had his guy already, Tom just didn't really matter. He had talked to enough other people, the landlady, this person, Marge, whatever, to sort of have enough feeling that he had his guy and that it just didn't matter. I think a good question for you guys is, you know, was, <laughs> was anything I'm saying a distraction for you in the second half of the season? Because I think to me, the world is so immersive and there are certain shows where if I'm not able to plausibly attach to something like, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about this with American Horror Story. It's it's easy to roll off my back because it's just like this show is pure nonsense. I'm not going to take it seriously. <laughs> it's fine. But because I'm taking Ripley seriously, perhaps I'm going to be more critical of something like this than I would be in another show. Because I find myself like second guessing things in my head as I'm watching and being like, OK, would Inspector Man really act like this? Would Marge really act like this and sort of she clearly knows that something is up like that's clear throughout a lot of this yeah she does i mean it wasn't that nobody was suspicious of what is going on marge was very suspicious of tom from the minute that he walked yeah. in and i think she also just knew dickie very well as well so she knew that this is how dickie operates that when he's with you, he's the the sun is fully on you. And when he's done with you, he's moved on sort of thing. So I know that some of it at the beginning was, you know, oh, in comes this guy who's like using Dickie and kind of taking away time that I'm spending with Dickie and the sun is now setting on me sort of thing. But I think she she definitely was the one tent pull through this whole thing that was suspicious of him right until the end when she was just like, Oh no, did I think like something was going on with Dickie and that maybe Dickie unalived himself? Yeah, I, if there somehow is a season two, I hope that we do see Dakota Fanning back because she is sort of the person who can really perpetuate this story and it does present an she adversary. Yeah, I, I think we, we need an adversary for Ripley now, especially because these people I think are all going to talk after the end of this show. Now, here's the other thing where I would be like, okay, come on. Richard Greenleaf's letters, and through all of them, every single I one, know. there's a familiar <laughs> refrain. You know, my friend Tom, he's great. He's the best. I saw him, and I, I've seen this sometime on, sometimes on Twitter, <laughs> where you see, like, you know, there's some, like, influencer, and there's a dude who's like, man, you're so attractive. And then you see, I... in, the, and then you see in the replies, you know, thanks, Bob, for helping pay off my mortgage. Thanks for teaching me CPR. It's like you're trying to like set up this person. And through the, all of these letters, he's just like, Tom is the greatest person ever. I Tom know. like saved babies on the street. Tom, <laughs> after like a certain a few instances of this, I would be like, this is the most insane thing. It's also just like, maybe you're like going to a bar and you're meeting up with somebody, but you're also trying to like, Set, set up the person you're meeting with one of your friends. And, you know, she's like, oh, this food is really great. And then you're like, you know who else is great? Greg. And you just <laughs> sort of go completely off field. I just, I would, th that drove me crazy. Like the, if it was one letter, fine. If, it, if I received more than one letter where this like amount of just like Tom hero worship is going on, I'm just packing my bags. I'm going to Italy. I'm figuring something out. Okay, listen, <laughs> I understand. I thought it was a bit ridiculous too, but when they kind of got to the reveal at the end where, you know, the, we had the inspector and we had the original detective that yeah. Diggy's dad had hired kind of start to piece some things together where it was kind of like, oh, maybe, you know, Diggy was interested in a relationship with Tom and Tom's like, yeah, you know, that was sort of the way that it was, but I wasn't interested and I had to end our friendship at that. Then that makes sense that all these letters of like, oh, but you know, who's great. It's Tom. That's like, oh, okay. Well, all this is coming together. Then Dicky was interested in Tom. Tom was not interested in Dicky. And now this has happened. I'm having a little bit of fun nitpicking, but I think in general, if you love this genre, you can't go wrong with this. Like, I wish that Netflix hadn't done the whole binge release. I know it's their thing. I think of this course. 
this would have been a really fun show to watch week to week, or we could have theorized more about, okay, how is Tom going to get out of this situation? And I think that that was the real fun of the show while watching it. Yeah, the typewriter, like everything that was going on with the bank fraud and my man Fisher Stevens who showed up in the show. <laughs> I know my you God, were going to be I, happy. I love him. He's just, I don't know, he's just wonderful. But anyways, yeah. having that whole typewriter with the E that was a little bit raised, and the detail when it comes to those crimes and Tom is so spot on. That's why for me, I love that they took the time with the two murders because he was so new at it and so messy at it and just didn't really know how to get this together in any kind of way that he has that type of like finesse and detail when it comes to other things. Also, we we are like 25 minutes into this video. We haven't even talked about John Malkovich at the end of this showing up being like, I'm I'm also an art dealer. Uh so like if you need a passport, I can hook you up. <laughs> he just like <laughs> met up with another Tom Ripley. The it was so random. I was just like, oh my goodness. How did that happen? I want to know. Did somebody I love just him. call John Malkovich? It was just like, sure. I know you were way above doing a, a four minute scene yeah. at the end of a Netflix limited series, but you know. Bro, you come over, you do this, I'll make you a really good dinner, I, go on vacation in Italy. I don't know what happened. I couldn't believe it when I saw him there. I was just like, I am not seeing what I'm seeing. Yeah. Holy. You got Fisher Stevens as well, which, I mean, he's you know, an iconic actor. What, how many minutes is he in on this show overall? <laughs> it's just, It was, this was a great show. Like it, It's, you know, it's not necessarily perfect to me, but it was a fantastic watch. Mm -hmm. I, I really, if you love this genre and you have watched the entirety of the spoilery review without actually watching the show, I'd still go back and watch it. Like, I, I can't recommend it enough for that. I absolutely recommend this show. Yeah, it was a perfect no. Was it better than the movie? 100%. <laughs> like, the acting was great. The casting was perfect. The writing was great. It's beautiful to watch. It's a it's a really good ride. Like if you're just looking for something that's a really fun cat and mouse, you know, back and forth, trying to figure it out. Is he going to get caught? Is he not going to get caught? Yeah, we ruined it in here. He doesn't get caught. But at the same time, it's really worth the ride. Like I, I can't recommend this show enough. Well, let's put it out in the universe. Ripley season two. I don't care what you're calling it. I don't care what you're promoting it at. I don't even care what the source material well, says. Now it's got to be called Timothy. <laughs> He's changed his name. Okay, well, I can't wait till we see Ripley 2 <laughs> colon the Timothy chapter <laughs> right. at some point down the road. But yeah, thank you guys so much <laughs> for hanging out with us. You know, hit that subscribe button. Join our Patreon as well. We have live streams over there where we'll talk all about Ripley. Yeah. Thank you guys. We'll see you here you. next time.